Rishi Sunak has told Israel's Prime Minister this is a moment for calm heads to prevail as its government strategizes a response to Iran's attack at the weekend. Sunak revealed on social media that a phone call with Benjamin Netanyahu, he reiterated his support for Israel's security but added further significant escalation will only deepen instability in the region. Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron landed in Israel earlier today where he and his German counterpart met with Israel's president Isaac Herzog and called on his government to expand humanitarian aid into Gaza. Cameron previously accused Israel of not allowing aid into the besieged enclave because of arbitrary denials by the government and lengthy clearance procedures. Responding to the UK's call for calm, Netanyahu said Israel will make its own decisions and do everything necessary to defend itself. Editor of the Jewish Chronicle, Jake Wallace-Simons, told Talk TV that Israel must respond. It seems like from Sunak's point of view, and indeed from President Biden's point of view, the correct response would be no response at all. They seem to want the Israelis to play only defence. And of course, the Israelis won't do that because that would establish a new normal under which Iran would do it again and expect the, you know, the Israelis not to respond. So Israel has to respond, but it needs to keep its allies on board, given that they are calling for restraint. But also it needs to avoid escalating into an all out war. Uh, but most importantly, it needs to enforce a painful deterrent that will prevent Iran from doing this again. Well, the region is a bit of a tinderbox at the moment. And I've always thought that it's the Middle East that will be Asia that is the hub for the next world war. So it will start as a regional war and it will escalate. What we're seeing at the moment, however, is massive international relations at play. What I, when I saw that Iran attack, I stayed up actually watching it um, uh, um, happen overnight. So the Iranians f launching their drones, launching, launching their intercontinental bl ballistic missiles. I thought it, it was choreographed. And what I mean by that, it's very unusual to launch an attack and tell your enemy what you're doing. Yeah. And, and then suddenly have this coordinated response by the Saudis, Jordanians, uh, and uh, Israelis, Britain, and America. So what you can see at play here is America desperately trying to stop this escalating and into an Iran-Israel war. And there's a number of reasons behind that. One of them being, obviously, any conflict is going to drag all of us into a regional war, and that could quickly escalate into a world war. Apart from the fact we're also distracted, you know, it's a distraction to what's going on in Ukraine as well. But secondly, in an election year, we just, recent, we just now have been talking about world economics and inflation. You know, that, that region is absolutely crucial to oil supplies mm -hmm. and also to international shipping. So if that escalates any further, we are going to see inflation go through the roof. And that is going to hammer Rishi Sunak. Mm -hmm. That's going to hammer Joe Biden. So they are throwing everything at the, um, the politics here to keep it calm. I just wonder what options are open to Israel, feeling that they have to do something and be seen to do something, and yet what will that something be that doesn't end up just provoking another response? And yeah. perhaps could it be another piece of theatrics yeah, where they say, actually, we're going to do this, by the way, just look out for our drones, they're coming over, in much the same way as just been done, so no one actually gets hurt everybody's pride and everyone saves face and then we all move on. Yeah, it's for the home audience. The Iranians yeah. did that attack and t told them about it so they, yeah. could, they could shout to their, you know, we've hit Israel yeah. and vice versa. Yeah, and, and in exactly the way that you're saying, a lot of this is about domestic politics, even though nobody's admitting it's about domestic politics, whether it's in the UK uh, or the US. But of course, there's the Israeli domestic politics mm -hmm. as well, where Netanyahu has got this very... Um, a fragile emergency wartime coalition government and he's got those who are even to the right of him who've been pushing to go into yeah. Rafa who are now pushing for a really big retaliation to Iran and Netanyahu knows that the minute this conflict is over he's over too and yeah. his, his fraud and corruption cases uh, will start again and he'll be out on his ear so you've got him fighting for his personal political career um, and also uh, the Iranian government is very, very unpopular, so they're fighting domestically as well. But the, my understanding of it is that the Iranian people, majority-wise, are in support of their leadership. In Israel, it's, it seems very much more split of people saying, actually, wh whatever we do, we don't want Netanyahu to be in charge. And that seems to be the case. So Netanyahu can extend this war, and he can try and bring the US and everyone else into it, but the world globally we are seeing turning their back slowly on Israel. They lost the moral high ground, and if they continue to attack consulates, 
then people are going to continue to say, well, Israel currently are not the ones who are in the right. Military base next to a consulate. <sighs> Thanks, Collins. Full Just for course. clarity. Full of terrorists. Mm -hmm. Full of terrorists, yes. But the concert was also hit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why put a military base next to it? 